This is now the conclusion of this message from Part A of Saturday evening, May the 24th, 1980, Memorial Weekend Deliverance Seminar being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Camp, Hot Springs, Arkansas. Wynne Worley is the teacher of the evening, teaching on the God of New Starts. Should this tape for any reason be defective, please explain and return for replacement. You can get rid of it, though. Thank God. Then mediums and seances. You know, you went to where they were going to have a seance? You got them. Oh, yeah. Calling up the dead, that's necromancy. By the way, I forgot to mention, every single one of the items in the, in the Old Testament has a death penalty hooked to it. Every single thing I'm talking about. The devil's updated them, giving them new names, and now calls it parapsychology. Talking to colleges and universities, that makes it all right. But depending on what crowd you're running with. If you're running with God's crowd, God said death. Parapsychology, my foot. The same old witchcraft, it's the same old occult garbage. By the way, that's why God ordered the absolute destruction of whole cities in the Old Testament. There are times when God said kill the men, the women, the children, the babies, even the livestock was slaughtered. Nothing was to be saved. You know why? Because it was so saturated with the occult. And God knew that contamination was so contagious, it wasn't worth the risk of it being around, and he ordered death for those who practiced it. That's what destroyed Babylon. That's why you need to get that book, The Babylon Mystery Religion. You'll find out the churches have little souvenirs hanging around them from the Babylon Mystery Religion. The things that caused God to destroy Babylon. Hanging around our churches, like the church steeple, for instance. You're welcome. You say, I'm not coming back to hear you anymore. Well, that's all right. I got you this time. <laughs> I'll give you a load to carry with you. All right. Curses and fetishes. Got any fetishes? How about the little Egyptian aunt, the little cross with a loop on top? That's the symbol of the Egyptian fertility goddess. To be very plain, that's the lust symbol. Belongs to the devil. And the spirit of lust, Asmodeus, has the right to come and occupy that. You got it hanging around your neck, girl? How nice. On your finger? Yuck. You're inviting the spirit of lust to come. Isn't that neat? It's a little cross with a loop on top. Look in the encyclopedia. Under the Egyptian Ankh, A-N-K-H, you'll find it is a symbol of the Egyptian fertility goddess. I won't even go into the unmentionable abominations it represents. By the way, there are a lot of people who know what it represents, and when you wear it, they think, ah, there goes one. You're welcome. You wouldn't think of doing the strip tease, but you know you might be advertising something else by wearing the on. Oh, on the little Italian horn, you know, the little wiggly horn that's so popular? I trust Satan for my finances. The little wiggly Italian horn. I trust Satan for my finances. Avon makes a lot of stuff. So does Sarah's, Sarah's coven which is called Sarah, Sarah Coventry Jewelry. That belongs to Sarah's coven. They didn't figure you'd buy it if you knew it was from a witchcraft coven, so they call it Sarah Coventry Jewelry. Isn't that neat? I told you about the Park and Gamble, Man in the Moon, 13 Stars, the witchcraft coven, it's their trademark. So you got, God says, if you bring an abominable thing in your house, I will put the curse on you that's on that abominable thing. That's in Deuteronomy. You'd be surprised what's in this book. No wonder we're having so much trouble. All the signs of the zodiac are cursed of God, are an open affront to God. Dump them out of your house. Don't get them in your, get them in your house. The um, little Mexican sun gods, the little um, uh, Buddhas, get rid of your incense burners. Whatever made you think you needed those. Owls and frogs, get them out. They're associated with witchcraft and demons. From the references, you'll find out. You say, oh, now you're going a little far. Well, when you talk to witchcraft spirits of sickness that came from owls, you'll believe, maybe, I have, you see. Cuckoo clock doesn't have a very good history either. Cuckoo is an unclean bird. It also, most of the cuckoo clocks are made in the Black Forest of Germany, witchcraft headquarters. I mean, huh? Maybe I could do without that, too. There's a lot of things, you know, we can just do without. You say, well, maybe it won't hurt. Well, okay, if you can risk it, go ahead. You say, you're scaring me. Good. 
<laughs> By the time we got shook up about some things. You were here a couple of Christmases ago. You heard Frank Hammond stand up here and warn against Pierce Earrings. You say, Pierce Earrings? Yeah, that's what we all thought. So we got through with it. They ran across it, you see. They, they learned about that sort of like I learned about curses. They ran smack into a demon that wouldn't budge. When they traced it down, God showed them. He said earrings, and they were just like you and I. Oh, no, now, you know, that's going a little far. But when they ran the references, they found that earrings are associated with slavery, harlotry, and heathenism, and represent mutilation of your body, which is forbidden of scripture. Oh, by the way, fellas, throw those tattoos in on that mutilation thing. The things that need to, now the gals are grinning. They, they feel better. Uh, you might as well confess that as mutilation of your body. Also, when you pierce your ears, you establish a soul tie with the person who pierces them. Soul tie? What is that? Well, think of a soul tie as a pipeline from your head to somebody else's. The soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David. That was a good soul tie. In Colossians, we're told about uh, the Christians that are being knit together in love, a soul tie. We're told that the church is to be knit to Christ. That same word, knit, is talking about a soul tie. Anything that your soul is your mind, will, and emotion. Any tie that closely involves you with another person or object, you can have soul ties to inanimate objects. That's why you can't get rid of some of these things, even though they're demonic. We had a lady who couldn't throw away a lot of demonic stuff because she had soul ties. She'd bag them up, put them in the hall and throw them out. The next morning she'd get up and run out there and get them and bring them back in. So for a long time, get rid of that stuff. They will cause them sickness. Mind, will, and emotions, anytime one or all three of those are involved, you're forming a soul tie. It can be a good thing and a healthy thing, depending who's on the other end of the pipe. May I just be crude? If you're hooked with a pipe to somebody else's head, through psychic business, through sex, because any sexual relationship forms a soul tie, legitimate or illegitimate, if you're hooked onto them and somebody flushes, guess who gets it? From them to you with love or whatever. And people cannot be set free many times until the soul ties are cut. They act like pipelines and they can be cut. And you have authority as a believer to do that. Isn't that great? Yeah. But you say, well, they're automatic. Now, don't get automatic on them. Too many of you are lazy. You don't want to shift gears. You want to, uh, there are things you can do, but you have to do them. Not that difficult, but it must be done if you want to get free from the snares of the devil. We have never gotten into them at all. We've been taught right. Some of us who are taught right said, I want to do it. We did it anyhow. So we got into it through stubbornness. Through stubbornness or ignorance, it doesn't make any difference. We're in a map. Amen? For old me, you whichever fits, you know. All right. Then let's, well, let's move on to Edgar Casey, the sleeping prophet. He was a witch, you know. He studied his writings trying to get information on how to get healed. You picked up his spirit. They transmit through the book. I'm going to get rid of all these car things and be careful about these car things from Africa and the Orient. Remember in the Old Testament, the Bible said that when God got ready for the tabernacle to be up to build the vessels of gold and silver and the embroidery and all these things to be done, he gave cunning skill to the people, the men and women who did those works. And they turned out beautiful, beautiful things. Guess who decided to mimic that? and give cunning skills to hands that were dedicated to demons. Make them able to carve ivory and wood and, and beads and everything else into the most beautiful little art objects made like little gods and goddesses, loaded with occult power, sometimes having a drill, hole drilled in them with a little prayer stuck up in them, which is the equivalent of a curse. Back of pictures, you found little curses packed to them. Sickness and other things come into homes many times because of it. I don't believe in that. Okay, I'm just telling you. You'll think about it now, though. <laughs> Pardon? Mostly from the Orient or Mexico. Or from, you, you can pray over them. Just go and ask the Lord. You'd be surprised what the Holy Spirit will tell you if you ask him. He's a gentleman. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't go nudging in. But, I mean, if you ask him about something, he'll tell you. A lady came up to my wife and, um, you know, you knew the Masons and the Eastern Star were called, didn't you? Everything in the ritual, everything about them goes right back to Babylon. Nimrod, Simeon, and Tamar. 
Um, a lady came up to my wife in Virginia Beach when we were there in a meeting. And she said, oh, Mrs. is what I want to ask you about the Eastern Star. And my wife said, do you really want to know? She said, yes. Yeah. She said, well, it's, it's occult, demonic. <gasps> she just finished a high degree, some kind of thing she climbed up into. She worked three months for it, you know, real hard work. Well, she started wanting to argue my wife. My wife said, well, I'm not going to argue with that. But I'll tell you what you do. Why don't you just go home and ask the Holy Spirit? Next night, the lady showed up. She came up to my wife. She came right up. She said, oh, Mrs. Worley said, I have to apologize to you. But when I went home, I thought, that is the most foolish woman I ever talked to in my life. The very idea of telling me to go home and ask the Holy Spirit. She knew there wasn't anything wrong with that. But she did say she'd do it, so she thought, well, I'll just ask. Guess what? The Holy Spirit spoke. I imagine it jolted her, because I don't know that the Holy Spirit ever spoken to her that way before. She asked him, and he was right on the line. He had to answer. But the funny way he went about it, he said, my child, how long did you spend on this latest degree that you worked on? She said, three months, Lord. Uh-huh. And uh, during this three months, how much time did you, uh, how many hours did you spend on this? Oh, many hours. I do a lot of memory work. Mm -hmm. And how many hours did you spend in my word during this three months? None. And how much time did you spend in prayer during these three months? None. She said, oh, good Lord. She sent her to meet him. That's her resignation. Withdrawal from Eastern Star. The Lord had shown her. The Lord will show you too. You'd be surprised what he's trying to tell you. You'll ask him. Just ask him. Now, Jean Dixon, somebody said, well, I thought she was religious. She is. She's a religious witch. <laughs> I run across people a lot of times, you know, they get kind of upset. They say, well, she's so religious, you know. Well, that's right. She is. She's a religious witch. And if you get out here now, let me ask you an honest question. If you were having a dream or a vision or something, and a great big snake crawled in bed with you and wrapped around you and gazed into your eyes and said, look to the east for wisdom, would you think that was God? You know, I've asked that question. All across the time, I can't find a single gal that thinks that was God. I mean, by the time that snake got in bed with her, she'd be on the other side of the house. <laughs> but that poor, that poor deluded woman named Jean Dixon, that happened to her according to her own words, and she thought it was God talking to her. By the way, sisters, if you were going to uh, have a gift of prophecy, as she claims to have, she's got one. <laughs> uh, but it's just not from God. Uh, would you lay cards? Would you consult a crystal ball or go to the astrology chart? That's where she gets her prediction. What do you mean reading that junk? You can pick up their spirits. Did you know that? I mean, Jews, all these psychics. Who cares what they think is going to happen? Now, the demons know. They get it from the demons. You want to get your information that way? If you got the books, burn them. Burn Christian science, Mormonism, unity. No, don't give it. If you had the itch, you wouldn't want to give it to somebody else, would you? You know, I mean, get rid of it. Destroy them. All of these things are occult. You need to get rid of them. Get them out of your life if they've ever touched it. Eastern religions of all kinds. Transcendental meditation, instant insanity. Yoga. That's a real good way to get them in you. Don't even do the exercises. If you want to do exercises, there are plenty of good ones you can do. But don't do any of the yoga exercises. Every one of them is a religious exercise which is designed to open you physically for the entrance of evil spirits, especially the lotus position, which opens you up to lust like you wouldn't believe. And they're teaching that in some of the natural childbirth classes, and they're also using a lot of yoga exercise in the high school, gymnasium classes. The devil's working. You better watch out for incense. Most of it's made by the Hare Krishna people. If you listen to My Sweet Lord, the Beatles record of some years ago, if you listen to that very much, you've got a Hare Krishna spirit in you big as a horse. That was a hymn of praise, Hare Krishna. If you sit there and listen to it a while, you opened up and his sweet, sweet Lord spirit came right in. I don't know how many people I've run into that thing and I said, Hare Krishna, what do you want, Morley? 
But he didn't know I was here. I said, yeah, but I did. He said, yeah, blankety, blankety. You're always causing trouble. Praise the Lord. Astral projection, Ekin car, I Ching, Karate. Karate, you know, boy, that's one really gets you can really get stuff full with that and in a hurry. We had some fun in Southern Illinois recently with a karate spirit. Just very quiet, meek and gentle. Young man, fine boy, twenty five years old, just one of the finest boys in the church. Second night he came up to me, he came very determined. He said, Brother Worley, I got a green belt in karate and I probably got those spirits. I said, Well, let's see, son. Well, I started praying, those muscles started tightening. I thought, uh oh, we got a live when I started looking for cement. I felt that old fish, he was getting ready to go. I said, I believe I need some men up here. They look kind of startled, you know. Because I've been telling them scary stories, and they didn't believe me. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, they thought, well, you know, that's nice. Uh, that happens off in Chicago. Somebody. It just fixed them to happen right there in their church. They didn't know it yet. But I knew it. So some of the boys, they walked up there, you know. I said, get a hold of his arm. They looked at me kind of funny. I said, go ahead. <laughs> and they were nice, you know, the fellas, they cooperated, they, I said, and got one behind, I said, put your hand on his shoulders now, hold on when this thing goes off. <laughs> it's always so much fun, you know, this is really a fun minute. You get to see so many startled looks on people's eyes, face, you know. You get to see the unbelief just fly off like birds going, <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, boy, like Beth Fluvius, here he came. Right out, he left, he started, Rah! boy, he came up from there, screaming and throwing men in every direction. How refreshing. <laughs> and I'll tell you, people got up, they were, they were looking, you know, in the church house of all places. Well, what, a, what, a, what a better place? It was nice, it was all carpeted. And, just made for the job. And we went into a long, drawn-out battle and got that boy free. Oh, I had a call from his pastor the other day. He's doing great. Witnessing, praying, loving people, praying for other people. He's so excited. You know who's not excited? The people who didn't get delivered. <laughs> we don't want that kind of thing in our church. We are assembly of God. <laughs> But it's going on anyhow, and I'm going back in September. I'm carrying a big bucket of gasoline with me to help put out the fire. Oh, uh, you know, all the martial arts in the same bucket. They all root back. If you root them back far enough, you'll find their roots in the occult. Acupuncture, Chinese witchcraft. If you want to be cured by witchcraft, try acupuncture. Anything? Is that tied in there too? I wouldn't doubt it. I've gotten some paranoid since I've been in the living. The devil sits so many jokers in the deck for us until it's hard to find out where he hadn't infiltrated and messed up something. And of course rock music is just full of it. Any kind of mind control takes you right into the occult. And um, then you've got Charles Manson. Did you know he's projecting by Ekantara all over the country? He's sitting in that prison cell and he's asked for projecting all over the country. And he's loading people with demons, Christians, who are open. And it's the people who have been into drugs, the people who have been into rock music, these are the people that he's hitting and into alcohol. And he's putting spirits of murder, torture murder, ritual murder. He's putting spirits of violence, hatred, revolution. Everywhere he finds an open door. This is why deliverance must go forth, people. Listen, we've got time bombs in our churches all over the place. And that man who is undoubtedly has an angel of light in him is projecting all over the country. And everywhere he can find a landing spot. And what church couldn't he find a lot of landing spots? With the rock music going night and day. Some of it's going on the platform in the church. You're welcome. You don't sanctify it by putting it on the platform. There's some folks from Mississippi here who were present when a list of about 20 or 25 Christian rock artist names were called out and demons answered to those names, 
cursed Jesus Christ, called him a bastard, and everything else. And they were named by the names of the artists that sang the rock songs on the record. I didn't even know a lot of them. If it's rock, it's not Christian. If it's Christian, it's not rock. Rock and roll, you don't know? You don't know what a rock beat is, son? I can't believe that. Just take your pick. They all open you up to demons. I'm talking about rock, rolling stone, some of Andrea Crouch, Jesus rock. You better watch out for it. It's as subtle as a snake. It's the beat. The beat is overemphasized in rock. What you need to do, son, is read uh, some of Larson's books. As a rock musician, he analyzes the whole thing. I don't have time to go into it here. But if you've dealt with as many rock and roll spirits as I have, had them spit and crawl across the floor like a snake and things like that, you wouldn't have any doubts whatsoever. Believe me, I wouldn't lie to you, son. I'm not familiar with him. I couldn't comment. I wouldn't doubt it. If it comes from Chuck Smith's outfit out in Manhattan Music, you better throw it out the door. He's one of the big ones who's pushed it across the country. He also doesn't think people can have demons. Country music will take you into downers like you wouldn't believe. You won't need a downer. You can just take the music and go into the nose eye. People were surrounded by garbage. Do you realize the devil controls the music industry? Yes. Acupuncture. Chinese witchcraft. She asked about a, a staple being put in your ear to lose weight or something like that. Acupuncture. Well, needles in the ear, staples through the ear for smoking, for weight control. That's all acupuncture. It's then also Chinese witchcraft. It's cooperating demons. You see, when you get healed by witchcraft, you have to understand you don't really lose demons, you swap. Well, for instance, Christian science heals, they say. Christian science, you know, I call that great nuts. Great nuts is neither great nor nuts. Christian science is neither Christian nor scientific. It's merely an occult religion that's been in existence for many years. And poor old Mary Baker Eddy uh, got hung into it when she was older and came out with this science and health and teaching the scriptures. Too bad she didn't read the scriptures before she wrote the key. But, you know, if you work by demon power, you don't have to read the scriptures. They'll tell you what to say. That's what she did. But Christian science heals by taking off a wart and giving you a cancer by relieving a headache and putting a brain tumor in. Now this is how, you, in the devil's market, you swap up. You don't swap down. When you, when, you, when you move into the market with Jesus Christ, when you're healed, you're healed. By the way, you can know it. Did you know that? You can know it? When you're delivered, you're delivered too. I hear about these people, well, out in the name of Jesus, you're delivered, brother, sister, just walk it out. They come to our church by the dozens like that. They have been prayed for. Great faith, great, great. Been doing any good, but it's great. Most of the time it's because the demons were not taken out. They were stunned. They may have been put in recession. They were put in cold storage, but they managed to revive. That's why it's so essential to get the demons out. Yes, ma'am. Yes. If it's based on those Russian gypsy melodies, you better watch out. And that's what a lot of the Russian composers are. And we have, there's some cases in, uh, that I wrote about in uh, Satan and the Classics in uh, Battling the Host of Hell. I didn't know it either. So we ran smack into demons. One of them was, um, let me see, I ran across devilish dancing. And that happened to come through a modern dance class this boy had taken at college. And he said, devilish music is in here too. If you're going to throw me out, you have to get him too. I said, what do you mean, rock and roll? Because, of course, I didn't like rock and roll. I knew about him. He said, no, you threw him out a while ago, 15 minutes ago. I said, well, what, what devilish music? And then he told me from the classics. They were downers. Some of that music, when you listen to it, you go, ew, ew, ew. it's in the music. Same way the... <laughs> I'm just taking away all the lovely things. Huh? <laughs> it does get to seeming that way, but you'd be surprised how much more time you'll have to pray and everything when you get rid of some of that stuff. Now, the thing, seriously, sister, the thing to do is seek the Lord. 
And I'll tell you, I'll tell you uh, one test you can make with music. Try praying or reading the Bible while it's going on in the background. You'll be surprised. You cannot concentrate on prayer, and you can't concentrate on Bible study, really get anything out of it when it's going on in the background. Even softly. It'll just, it'll just, it'll get you, your mind, your mind will drift. You can't hang into it. But above all, pray. The Holy Spirit wants Christians who will be dependent on Him. Yes. Troublemakers like me are just to stir up the turf, and, and you're going to do the refining at home with the Lord. Amen? You say, I don't like you. Well, <laughs> I've heard that before. It's good not to be liked by some people and persons without body. Yes. Well, why don't you pray about it and then throw them away? <laughs> I'd take the horoscopes out, especially if you have children in the house. See, you're laying them open. They, they, you may not be that much affected by it, just the mere presence of it, but you've got children. Now, if you've got books on horoscopes, get rid of those things. And we're going to have to move on because we, we're, we're a pinch for time. I don't want to shut you off, but we are going to have to move on. Now, wouldn't it be at night, I tell you now, all those things, if you come in contact with any of those things, you are cursed, your children are cursed, your grandchildren are cursed, your great-grandchildren are cursed. Now let's stand and go home. Wouldn't that be great? What a horrible thing that would be, huh? Did you know, though, that God does this over and over again in His Word? He will lay it on us and show us just how bad it is, how dreadful, how tremendously awful the situation is. And He'll turn right around and say, but, if you will do this, and oh, I'm so glad I can say, but, if you will do this, there's a way to break the devil's power and to give you a fresh start. God is the God of fresh start. Isn't that encouraging? You don't have to remain under those things. All right? Now, there are two steps to getting free from this mess. The first step, we're going to rob the devil of the ground of unconfessed sin because this is one of the grounds on which the devil can operate. This is one ground on which the demons can stand and claim to have a right to be in you. You say, I don't have any demons. Well, <laughs> we'll see. Just assume there might have been one or two escapes your notice. All right? And let's see what we can do. I'm going to show you how to destroy the legal footing on which these things sit. Once that is destroyed, they will be subject to dismissal in Jesus' name. Isn't that good news? All right. First of all, we need to go to the Lord and confess the sin of coming in contact with these things. You say, well, I just didn't do a lot of it, you know. Well, you don't have to sleep in bed with somebody with smallpox to get the disease. You just have to touch the sheet. So let's assume if you touch the sheet, if you were simple, if you were open, you got them. You say, well, suppose I didn't. It won't hurt anything to renounce them. But it hurt a lot if you don't do it. Okay, if you did get them. All right. Now, we're going to go to the Lord again because of those nosy neighbors of yours are going to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes so you won't distract them. Father in heaven, I come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I confess to you that in the past, because of ignorance, curiosity, or willfulness, I have come into contact with certain occult things. I now recognize this as sin and confess it as sin to you and claim forgiveness in Jesus' name. Specifically, I confess that I have come into contact with the following occult things which I remember. Now you very quietly tell the Lord the ones that come to mind. Quietly ask the Father to show you the ones that He knows about. I confess all these contacts as sin, Father. And I renounce them. In Jesus' name. 
Now we're going to take step two. Satan, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Satan, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. I'm closing any door that I may have opened to you. Through contact with the following occult things that I remember. Now mention again the ones you mentioned earlier. Don't forget water witching. I renounce all these occult sins and idolatry that I remember. I also renounce all those I cannot remember. I repent and renounce all sins of occultism and I renounce any oath that I may have made to any false gods. I renounce Satan and all his works. I hate all his demons. I count them as my enemies. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I now close the door on all occult practices and command all related spirits to leave me now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I break any and all curses of illegitimacy upon me or my family, even back to ten generations on both sides of the family, and I break those curses on my children, my grandchildren, and all my descendants, in Jesus' name. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I now renounce, break and loose myself from all demonic subjection from every ungodly soul tie to my mother, father, grandparents, or any other human beings living or dead who have ever in the past are or now dominating or controlling me in any way which is contrary to the will of God. I thank you, Lord, for setting me free. I also repent. I ask you to forgive me if I am or have dominated or controlled someone else in the wrong way. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I now renounce, break and loose myself all my children, from all psychic heredity, demonic roles, psychic powers, bondages, bonds of physical or mental illness, or curses upon me or my family line as a result of sin, transgressions, iniquities, occult or psychic involvement of myself, my parents, or any of my ancestors, of my spouse, any and all ex-spouses, or their parents, or any of their ancestors. I thank you, Lord, for setting me free. In the name of Jesus Christ, I now rebuke break and loose myself and all my children from any and all evil curses, charms, vexes, hexes, spells, jinxes, psychic power, bewitchment, witchcraft or sorcery, which has been put upon me or my family line any person or persons, or from any occult source, or psychic source, and I command all connected and related spirits to leave us now. 
Thank you, Jesus, for setting us free. I come to you, Lord Jesus, as my deliverer. You know all my problems, all the things that bind, that torment, defile and harass me. I now refuse to accept anything from Satan and loose myself from every dark spirit, from every evil influence, from every satanic bondage, from every spirit in me, which is not a spirit of God. And I command all such spirits to leave me now. I confess that my body is a temple for the Holy Spirit. Redeemed, cleansed, sanctified, justified by the blood of Jesus. Therefore, Satan has no more place in me. No more power over me because of the blood of Jesus. Now, what we've just done is to break legal holes and destroy legal rights that demons have to operate. Now I'm going to throw the net out and we're going to see what's in it. What I'm going to do is not mysterious. I'm going to explain to you what I'm going to do so that you won't be afraid if you've never been in a service like this. There's nothing to fear. There are angels by the legion circling all over the place. And uh, there's nothing to fear. This is the safest place in Arkansas right now. I mean, it's guarded. The demons are pinned in. They've been pinned in since the beginning of the service. And they're hemmed in. And if you're feeling uneasy, it's because there's something inside of you that's a little upset. We trust they'll be a great deal more upset. Now, you say, where do the demons go when they come out of people? Well, I think of the angels as giant vacuum cleaners going... And they take them where Jesus sends them. They get them out of here. They don't let the garbage stay around the clutter thing. You don't have to worry about that. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to call out families of demons, common demons. And then from time to time, I'm going to ask you to breathe out. When I ask you to do that, take three or four slow, deep breaths. I want you to breathe slow and deep and breathe out just as hard as you can. Because to cast out demons, the word cast out, is ekbala, which means to vomit out, throw out violently. And when you do this, you are telling the demons, if they're in there, I want you out. You're telling the Lord, I'm doing what I can, Lord. I'm ready for him to go. But I pray. I don't want you to pray with your mouth. I want you to pray in your head. I don't want you to go passive on me. That's always dangerous. But I want you to actively cooperate by praying in your mind. When I'm calling the names of the Spirit, you agree with me in your mind. Yes, Lord. If I have that thing, I don't know where it might have come from, but if I have that thing, don't sit and argue wonder if I got that. Just say, Lord, if that's in me, I want it out. If that's in me, yes. In Jesus' name. Yes. In Jesus' name. You just keep agreeing with me. Then I'm going to command them to come out. And they will start coming out. They'll come out all over the audience and uh, they're not going to hurt anybody. But uh, they'll have to leave. Because we've destroyed, we've pulled the rug out from under their feet. Whereas before they were safe and secure, they had their own little footing. We've destroyed a great deal of garbage tonight. We gave them legal rights and legal holes. Now, all I'm going to do then is I just want you to just relax and Instead of breathing through your mouth for a while, I, want, I mean, you know, I want you to breathe through your mouth. Just breathe normally, and you'd be willing for them to come out. That's all you have to do. You just agree with me. First, I'm going to take authority over Satan. In the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke you. I bind you with authority from the third heaven, high above Satan, high above principalities, powers, thrones, dominions, world rulers, kings, princes, and every angelic rank. I rebuke you. I bind you. I put you on notice that the people in this audience are protected by the angels of God, and your demons, every one of them, must be subject to the power of Jesus Christ. And you demons that are here, I notify you in the name of Jesus Christ and by authority from the third heaven that you are bound and you are rebuked and you must come out in Jesus' name. When I call you or your family name, you must leave the people in Jesus' name. You have no right here. What? Know you not? Their bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, and him that defiles that temple God will destroy. And every one of you unclean spirits is a defiling element in the body of these believers, and they don't want you. Jesus doesn't want you, and you are notified that you must obey in Jesus' name to come out of the people when I call you or your family name. 
Now, all spirits of laziness, self-hate, impatience, pride, irritation, ambition, loneliness, despair, suicide, death, hopelessness, confusion, rejection, depression, misery, torment, hopelessness, torture, doubt, unbelief, greediness, guilt, shame, condemnation, evil heart of belief, unbelief. Come out of there now. Move. Come on. Breathe them out, people. Hard. Come out of there now. Jesus' name. Move. Move in Jesus' name. Come out of there. Loose the people and let them go. Move. Let the people go free. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, you come out of the people right now. Move. There is no way you can stay. Come out in Jesus' name. Move. Let the people go. Every spirit I have named, and if you are in that spirit family, you come out. Let the people go in Jesus' name. Every spirit that I have named and those in the family, keep coming out. You just keep coming out in Jesus' name. Move. You line up in the order Jesus wants you to leave, and you leave in Jesus' name. Right now, every spirit of the occult, the Ouija board, sorcery, witchcraft, witchcraft control, automatic writing, handwriting analysis, fortune telling, astrology, horoscopes, uh, hypnosis, ESP, levitation, clairvoyance, spirits of medium, seances, charm, enchantments, curses, fetishes, Edgar Casey, Gene Dixon, Eastern religion, transcendental meditation, yoga, karate, I Ching, Hare Krishna, Zen, astral projection, Ekankar, reincarnation, psychic heredity, mind control, rock music, water witching, Jezebel, Antichrist, 666, spirits from Charles Manson, and spirits from Star Wars. Come out of there in Jesus' name. Move. Come out of there in Jesus' name. Spirits from Star Wars and the Empire Strikes Back. Come out in Jesus' name. Move in Jesus' name. All the witch spirit spirits. Move. Come out of there in Jesus' name. Loose the people and let them go. Loose them and let them go. Out in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Move. Keep moving. Keep moving out in Jesus' name. Move. Move. Let the people go. Every spirit of fear. Fear of giving and receiving love. Fear of death. Fear of pain. Fear of falling. Fear of the dark, fear of dogs, fear of cats, fear of insects, fear of crowds, fear of man, fear of the loss of salvation, fear of nightmares, demons, the devil, fears, all kinds of fears. Come out. God has not given us a spirit of fear. Loose the people and let them go. Fear, fear, fear of death. Come out. Move in Jesus' name. Loose the people in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Come out. Keep coming out. Just keep moving. Keep moving in Jesus' name. Loose them. Free them out, people. They'll come out. Come on out of there in Jesus' name. Wrath, anger, temper, contention, fighting, murder, destruction, malice, envy, resentment, bitterness, jealousy, pride, hysteria, fit, convulsion, spirit of a broken heart, unforgiveness, schizophrenia, paranoia, wounded spirit, deep hurt, seething anger, rage and fighting. Come out of the people right now in Jesus' name. Move in Jesus' name. Loose them. Loose them. Loose them in Jesus' name. Come out. Move, move, move. Keep moving in Jesus' name. The Lord Jesus Christ is gift you, you foul thing. Come out of there. Come out of God's property. Move in Jesus' name. Loose the people and let them go. Spirits of profanity, blasphemy, filthy conversation, lying, gossip, slander, whining, complaining, self-pity, criticism, mockery, foolishness, ridicule, perversity. Come out of the people now. Move. Leave, leave, come out in Jesus' name. Keep coming out. Move, move. Let the people go free in Jesus' name. Spirits of addiction. Addiction to food, gluttony. Addiction to nicotine. Addiction to alcohol. Addiction to drugs. Every spirit of craving and addiction. Marijuana, acid, speed, LSD, diet pills, amphetamines, valium, heroin, cocaine, tranquilizers, barbiturates, uppers, downers. All the spirits of addiction come out of the people now. In Jesus' name, addiction, craving. Come on, move, move. Loose the people let them go. Spirits of lust. I break every curse of lust on the people back to ten generations on both sides of the family. In the name of Jesus Christ, spirits of lust, masturbation, guilt, shame, condemnation, burning passion, adultery, fornication, immorality, Sex perversion, oral sex, fatal sex, incest, uncleanness, filth, sadism, masochism, frigidity, impotence, rape, 
filthy conversation, filthy dreams, pornography, profanity, homosexuality, cruelty, incubi, sexubi, lasciviousness, lewdness, nudity, all the lust family. Come out, Jesus saying. Asmodeus, move in Jesus' name. Move in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Move. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Move. Move. Loose the people and let them go. Loose them and let them go. Loose them and let them go. Spirits of deformity, infirmity, pain, arthritis, allergies of all kinds, hay fever, infection, cancer, tumor, ulcer, hemorrhoids, muscle spasm, grounding, asphyxiation, choking, smothering, fainting, suffering, swelling, cramps, fits, convulsions, epilepsy, heart failure, heart disease, heart attack, and the fear of all these. Psoriasis, eczema, acne, warts, hernia, blindness, and all kinds of trouble with the eyes, paralysis, all kinds of trouble with the ears, deafness, hard of hearing, cataract, glaucoma, spirit of the bone breaker and the back breaker, come out of the people in Jesus' name. Loose them and let them go. Loose them and let them go. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Come out. Loose them. Loose them. Loose them and let them go. Out. In the name of Jesus. I break the curse of Leviathan. Back to ten generations on both sides of the family. Leviathan, thou piercing serpent. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Loose the people. Leviathan. Move! Come out of there, Leviathan! Leviathan! Move! 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 You'll be chopped into pieces according to the scripture and made meat for the people of God. Come on, Leviathan! Move! Move! Come out of there! Leviathan! Move in Jesus' name! Loose the people and let them go! Loose them and let them go! Loose them and let them go! If you're having problems, if you're feeling strange or frightened, please don't leave the building without prayer. If you do, you could be up all night. When demons are riled up and frightened, they're going to take it out on you. Get some help before you leave. If you need help, raise your hand. Somebody can move to you if you can't get here. Or you can move up here if you want to. Let's stand. Those who can stand, let's stand and lift our hands. This is the end of the CD.